Hello everyone, uh, Dave here back with another video, uh, back with another wrestling video. We haven't done a wrestling video in a little while, so I thought, um, let's do one. Uh, we're going to be talking the most recent pay-per-view, which was uh, Survivor Series War Games. Um, spoiler alert, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, if you watched any of my previous wrestling videos, you would know that I'm a new, relatively new fan. I've only been watching it, and i probably coming up on a year. Um, I've been in wrestling for a long time, but I've only been like watching it, you know, religiously for this past year. Um, so, you know, I, I may not be as, um, as uh, burnt out on the product as some other people might be. Um, so that's why I say maybe I'm a little naive um, with like saying like, oh, this was fantastic when, you know, other people may have a more critical eye um, than I do, but, um, you know, friends of mine who have been watching wrestling for way longer than I have, they liked it, um, you know, some of the consensus online that I'm seeing is that it was pretty well received, um, so, you know, I don't know, that's what the comments are for, so if you stumble across this video, um, my videos don't normally do well and don't get a lot of views, and the wrestling videos normally get less views as well so um this is mainly for me i guess um but if you happen to stumble across this video in my channel welcome happy to have you um and if you watched war games um uh feel free to let me know down in the comments below i know we're a few days behind um i only got around to watching it yesterday which was sunday it aired saturday i watched it sunday i'm making the video today which is monday um, but yeah, let's just go through the card in no particular order. Or I guess we're just gonna go with the order that's on this um, that's on the DraftKings website here. Um, which I just think drafting, like betting on wrestling, is really funny <laughs> because it's all um, staged, <laughs> fake. Um, but that's a topic for another day. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna dive into it here. <clears throat> So the first, actually, you know what? Let's go in order of the card. I'm sorry. Let me switch it up. We'll go in order of the card. So the first match that opened the night was fantastic. It was Damage Control versus Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Shotzi, and Becky Lynch. It, this was a War Games match, um, and I loved it. I a bunch of my queens are in this match. I'm a big Becky Lynch fan. She's like my ultimate queen. But I also love Asuka. I love Io Sky. I love Charlotte Flair. Like, really, all the women in this match, I really like. Um, and it was a good match. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think just the War Games aesthetic, being in a cage, having two rings, the match not officially starting until everyone's involved, I think is is just a really cool, unique thing. Um, and um, let's see, what some highlights. Um, I mean, first off, Eosky putting a trash can on her head and then jumping off of the top of the <laughs> off the top of the um cage like 15 20 feet in the air and then landing on everybody that was pretty in that was pretty nuts <laughs> i have never seen anything like that um i had to like keep rewatching that over and over again because i was like no way she just did that and is like she's getting up there you know it, it, it was pretty ingenious, honestly. She, like, lowered the chain down, and then Dakota Kai hooked on the trash can, and then she pulled it up. And the whole time I'm thinking to myself, she's not going to do this. She's not. And then she's lifting it over. No way. She's not going to. She's going to She's gonna do that. She's going <laughs> to. And she she did it, and it was pretty nuts. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, the, you know, there there's, you know kind of a lot going on here storyline wise it, admittedly um i've been kind of pretty busy so i've been out of the loop on like the most recent kind of changes and updates to storylines but um from what i can tell you know obviously becky and charlotte have their beef so like you know it was kind of a um kind of a um you know will they won't they fight each other even though they're supposed to be on the same team but they kind of came together and, and, and worked together, and that was fun. Um, and then the whole damage control thing, you know. Um, uh, also, um, damage control had somebody who I'd never seen before. Uh, um, Kyrie, uh, Kyrie Sane? Kyrie, uh, how do you, I forget how to pronounce her name. 
Um, but I really enjoyed her. I thought she was excellent. I'm not a big NXT guy. It's hard enough for me to keep up with the WWE, like, proper. Um, yeah, I, it, it, I can't always watch NXT. So I, I didn't know much about her, but apparently she rose through NXT very fast. And I really enjoyed her. I loved her, like, little skip. Her, like, robotic skip to the ring was, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And, um, you know, she did a couple backhands with like the trash can lid that I thought looked cool and everything um so yeah I enjoyed it overall like there was a lot going on a lot of high flying a lot of um you know I I, I mean I, I gotta say it like sometimes I, I think the women I love watching the women wrestling more than the guys um just because I I don't know I just feel like the cor choreography um with a lot of the women matches just like are cooler to me i don't know I, I don't really know how to explain it but it was a great match um becky uh bianca charlotte and shotzi won um you know i i love oh oscar brought the mist obviously she always does that um but yeah there was a lot of fun to be had there and it was a great way to kick off the show it was sick um next i think think was the intercontinental championship between gunther and the miz i'm a level with you guys i just skipped this i out of everything here i enjoyed everything i watched but this i didn't watch because i don't care the miz has never been somebody who i've been a fan of i just like I, i'm not like i like heels but i like interesting heels like i like shinsuke and um who are some other heels I like? I, <laughs> off the top of my head, the, the most immediate heel I can think of is Shinsuke. But it's because Shinsuke, as a heel, like, I don't want just a, a Miz type here where, he, the, if I could talk, a Miz type heel where it's just like, I'm better than everybody, and this town sucks, and blah, 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 blah. Like, I want a guy like Shinsuke who, when he wrestled Seth, he was like, no, I'm going to make it so this man can't pick up his children again. Like, that's the heel I want. A guy who legitimately looks like a psycho um, and who actually looks like a bad guy, not just a douche, you know? Um, so I already was like, I don't care about The Miz. And then Gunther, I don't care either. Like, this guy has held the belt for way too long, and he's boring. He's boring boring he's boring to watch he's just a big guy that's his whole thing he's just a big dude and it really sucks like it sucks to watch him because he's boring and i'm not a fan and i don't like him um so i just skipped it i just i just skipped it because i had you know i had no i didn't care who won i don't even know who won i assume gunther still won because he you know i i actually think he did um, cause they don't want him to lose the belt for some reason. Um, they had a great run with like Drew McIntyre and Sheamus, like, you know, which one of them could get the belt. Any one of those guys deserve to get the belt off of Gunther and nobody has yet. So I don't know what they're going to do with that, but it's boring and I don't like it. So I didn't watch it. <laughs> um, next we have Santos Escobar and Dragon Lee. The Santos Escobar heel turn just doesn't sit right with me. I know he started out as a heel, but obviously I've always known him as a face because that's what I when I started wrestling. And it seemed just so random. Like, I know, you know, Carlito kind of chirped back and forth, like, you know, try to... I, I, I don't know if it was, like, on purpose or, like, if he was, like, purposely trying to break up, you know, uh, Santos and and Ray's thing, but, like, uh, from my understanding, again, I, I've been a little out of the loop, but Carlito said something, and then that made uh, Santos mad, and then they started beefing, and then Ray tried to break up the beef, so then Santos, like, hurt Ray's knee or something, it was really weird, um, but also just super random, like, Santos was supposed to be, like, the replacement for Don, like, Ray was supposed to be able to pass on the legacy to Santos in some capacity and it's just I don't know it just seems random um and so I, I'm not the biggest fan of it but the match in question though between him and Dragon Lee was great 
Um, a lot of high flying action, both, you know, great luchadors. Um, I love the luchador style wrestling, you know, the flips, the, the, the off the rope, the, you know, jumping around, like it's all very cool. Um, and Santos did win. Um, I'm curious to see what happens here. I know Ray, I think in real life is actually hurt. So it'll probably be a little bit before he comes back, but I'm curious to see what they do. Um, because gen I genuinely don't know. Like, he's definitely going to probably start beefing with the LWO if he hasn't already. But I don't know who they're going to pin him up against. Um, like, I don't know if they're going to start bringing Dragon Lee more into the fold and make him a, a, a player. Um, or if Ray's going to come back and then they're going to beef with one another. I don't know. But the Santos Escobar heel turn isn't really vibing with me so far but i'm open to see what they do it's not one of those heel turns where i'm just like immediately like this sucks and i hate it i do dislike it but i'm willing to see okay where are they gonna go with this i'm willing to like take a step back and be like if they write an interesting story with this i'm willing to concede you know my um reservations on it so we'll see what happens there um, next we had the Women's World Championship, Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. Um, I, I, I mean, Rhea won, obviously. I don't know if, she's another one who, like, I, the, my thing with, with the belt matches are, like, you know who's gonna win. You know who's gonna win. So it's kind of boring. Um, but people like Rhea, people like Gunther, people like Roman, you know, who's going to take the belt from these guys? Like, who? They've set up people to do that, and they just haven't. I have no idea. I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I it, it, like, I'm okay with Rhea holding the belt because she's interesting. Like, I don't like long belt reigns regardless because I think they're boring. I want to see different people get their time to shine and have their ability to like on full display but at the very least if you're gonna have somebody hold a belt make them someone interesting like Rhea don't make it like Gunther who does the same thing and all he does is just I'm big strong guy don't make it Roman who just doesn't defend it at all so nobody can take it from him and that's boring and lame um so I'm okay that Rhea won obviously I do really like Rhea Ripley I mean who doesn't um, uh, Zoe Stark, I'm not the huge fan of, but she did well. I mean, I, I know her and Trish Stratus falling out thing was very interesting. And then it kind of just went nowhere, or at the very least, I don't know where it went. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to pick that back up. I don't know if now they kind of don't really know what to do with Zoe Stark. So they're just like, ah, oh, throw her in the women's championship picture and see what happens. Um, but it'll be interesting to see, like how it plays with Becky because obviously they had beef and um you know now that Zoe Stark isn't with Trish anymore are her and Becky still enemies like I think they are but I don't really know honestly um and a lot of this could be already answered or easily answered again like I said at the top of the video I've unfortunately been a little out of the loop um, I've been very busy with work and with stand-up comedy, and also I bought myself a PS5, so I've been playing that a lot, but, so I haven't been able to watch weekly like I normally have, um, but I'm just kind of going off of what I saw in this pay-per-view and then my own kind of assumptions and picking at pieces, you know, from articles and from just what I've heard my buddies say, um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. It was a good match. I really liked it. You know, Rhea... I uh, hit the riptide and all that stuff, and, um, you know, I, I I don't remember anything specific about it. I just remember it being good. So, I guess that's good enough, right? And then, last but not least, I feel like I'm missing something, but I've covered everything that's on here. Um, last but not least, we had the main event, the Judgment Day and Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, Randy Orton. This was a War Games match, and this was, I think, honestly, you know, again, in my very, very small, you know, sample size of about a year, 
this might be one of the best wrestling matches I've ever seen, at least live. You know what I mean? Like, at least, like, watching it as it aired. Well, I know it wasn't as it aired because I watched it a day late, but you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like a match that aired, you know, years ago that I went back and watched for my own, like, research and whatever. Um, but, like, in the current continuity of wrestling, this might legitimately be one of the best matches I've ever watched. This had everything. There was, oh, there's a lot of storylines. There's, like, the whole Spider-Verse-Web <laughs> multiverse of storylines going on here. You, of course, have the Judgment Day beefing with pretty much everybody. You have Drew beefing with Jay because Jay, uh, like, cost them a title or something. I don't remember the specifics there. You've got inner team squabbles, Drew beefing with, like, the Judgment Day also because he doesn't really like them. He just wanted any shot to get a shot at Jay Uso. You've got Seth and Cody beefing because they have a thing where they're mad at each other. You have, like... You, you you know and and putting it aside you saw like when they brought out the the was it bull whip or whatever um they were talking to each other and Seth was like one time one you know one match one one night we're going to be friends and then after that who knows um but this match had everything like you had everyone got a chance to hit some sort of finisher at some point except Seth he did not get the chance to hit the pedigree he was setting up for it I think on Finn in the middle and then it like got reversed or something like that but everybody got some sort and I also think Drew McIntyre didn't get to hit the Claymore as well I think he was setting up for it and, and whatever but like most of the guys rather had some sort of chance to shine um a lot of great usage of the weapons Sammy just ripping a pipe out of the out of the uh, cage and just using that to go to town on dudes was great. Um, uh, what else? You know, there there's just so much. Obviously, the end of the match where they had um, was it JD McDonough or somebody that they just threw, that Sammy and Seth just threw off the top of the cage into an RKO by Randy Orton. <laughs> <laughs> like he like Randy was like come on come on get him and he, he literally they threw him off and Randy just caught him arcade out him phenomenal and the whole build up of like is Randy going to show obviously he was going to show um but seeing how how crazy everyone went was something awesome to see um and for me someone who again um, you know I haven't been watching that long and Randy has been you know, hurt. He's been out the whole time that I've been watching. So for me, obviously I'm familiar with Randy Orton. I played the games. I've watched, you know, I know his moves. I watched some of his stuff before, um, you know, from the past and whatever, but like, I haven't seen him like currently, you know, because he's been hurt. So this whole time I'm hearing whispers of Randy Orton, like he's like some, uh, like fabled, legend you know whispers in the wind of like oh randy orton randy orton and then finally seeing seeing him show up was great you know you could hear the electricity in the crowd you know the second his music hit people went and lost their minds um it ruined like it broke up damian priest's like cashing in because he was gonna like Rhea comes sprinting out with the with the case and he was gonna cash in i assume on seth um but, and again, like, as much as I love that Randy Orton showed up, I need Damian Priest to just cash in so they can shut up about it. I really just need him to cash in so they can stop with this whole Mr. Money in the Bank, Senior Money in the Bank, you know, waving around this briefcase. It's boring. Just cash in or don't. Anyway, I had that same rant in my last <laughs> WWE video, so we'll, we'll pass over it now. Um, but... Uh, what else happened? Um, they all did the, um, I don't know what it's called, but like, like the, the move where like Randy holds the guy and he's like laying on the second rope and then he kind of like slam, like, like slams him and everybody did that at the same time. That was pretty cool to see. Um, there was just a lot, there was a lot going on almost to the point where it was like hard to follow what everyone was doing, but, um, there was a lot of good choreography in there <laughs> that, you know, made it so that I could follow it, which was cool. Um, and then, so it ended with the, um, you know, the RKO by, uh, 
Randy Orton. Um, so the Seth Rollins, Cody, Jay, Sammy, and Randy won, which was great. But then we got some interesting stuff. So they're all, you know, and, and also, ooh, let me touch on this real quick. Randy being back opens so many interesting storylines. For example, like, Jay was, Jay and, I think it was Jay and Jimmy are the reason that Randy got hurt in the first place. I don't know if that was intentional or if that was written in the storyline. But, um, or like intentional, like if that was like supposed to happen, like obviously they weren't supposed to hurt him. But if it was like, you know, they wrestle, like, how, how am I trying to explain this? Like, did Randy get hurt? And then they were like, oh, uh, let's just write this in. Or was it like, a, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But anyway, um, you know, even though they were on the same side, they kind of had a little thing, you know, a little moment with one another where where Randy was like, I didn't forget. I didn't forget what you did, man. And Jay was like, yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was in, um, and then Jay kind of saved him with a super kick. And, and at the end, they kind of were all dapping each other up. Even Cody and Seth were like, you know what? Okay, we did good. We did something cool today. Um, so they're all having their, you know, kumbaya, celebrating their win moment. And then CM Punk shows up. I, again, as in, I'll say it for the 80th time, as a newer wrestling fan, I didn't get the opportunity to see CM Punk wrestle. Obviously, because he's been out of WWE for at least a decade, if not more. But I'm familiar enough with CM Punk to know how big of a deal he was and how much people missed him and wanted him back. And to show up in Chicago um, was great. So as soon as that kicked in and he came out, he didn't have to say a gosh darn word. He didn't say a th he didn't say a thing. He just came out and everybody knew this this guy's here. This guy's back, and that also <laughs> it, 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 it opens up some interesting stories because I don't know if this is real. But Seth and CM Punk do not like each other. I wasn't aware of this, but they hate each other. I don't know if that's just for the story. I don't know if that's in real life. I think part of that is real. Um, but I don't know. I don't know for sure. What I will say, though, is, you know, you, you, you didn't see it. Um, I don't think they showed it in the broadcast, but there was a clip circulating um, of Seth, like, like starting to try to get at him. He kept flipping him off. He kept, like, yelling at him. And then CM Punk was just kind of egging him on a little bit, like, oh, let's go, let's go. And then Seth was, like, trying to get at him, and then he had to be held back by people. And then even Michael Cole came around and kind of was like, hey, dude, dude, chill out, chill out. And you saw, like, Cody in the back being like, hey, what's, you know, what's going on, what's going on? And I got to say, like, props to WWE because if that – was not real they made it look pretty real like i'm watching this and i sent it to a buddy of mine and i was like dude this look kind of real don't it like it's interesting and the beef that they have again i don't know if that's just for the show or if that's real life beef i think it is real like beef that they have with one another um and my buddy was like i'm calling it cm punk versus seth rollins main event night one of wrestlemania which I could see it. That would be awesome. It seems like a bit of a tall order, but you never know. Um, and I'm willing, I, I'm wondering how professional, like how much these guys are willing to put aside because if they legitimately don't like each other, they might not even want to work with one another, um, which could mean matches or it could mean no matches. I, they're probably going to wind up, you know, pushing past that to some degree, you know, for the sake of the product and for the sake of their jobs and stuff. Um, but it's just an interesting thing to think about and it's going to lead to some interesting storylines going forward. Um, but yeah, that's it. That was Survivor Series War Games. Um, I, I loved it. This was my first War Games and I thought the whole card was fantastic except for Intercontinental match, which I don't care about literally at all like i i could not care less i mean i i guess that's not true because i do care that gunther still holds the belt because i hate him 
and I think he's boring, but whatever, right? He's, I don't know what they're going to do, right? I, I, who knows? Um, but the rest of the card I thought was great. Um, a lot of, a lot of great moments that I didn't even touch on. Like, I feel like, you know, in these videos, I kind of just sort of recap and give my own little two cents about like, Ooh, what happens here? And this could happen. And this was my favorite part and whatever. But I leave a lot out because one, I have bad memory and I can't remember everything, but also because like, I want to leave it open so that y'all can watch and have it not completely spoiled for you but also so that y'all can let me know in the comments below what you thought and what your favorite parts were so i would love to hear from you um apologies if there was any background noise my roommate is in a meeting right now um a zoom meeting so that probably maybe got picked up hopefully not but we'll see um but yeah that was it that was survivor series war games uh I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I'm excited for what happens next. I know there's a Raw tonight, which I probably won't be able to watch, but I'm going to record it and watch it tomorrow. Um, because they always say the, the Monday after a pay-per-view is a pretty big deal. <laughs> there's a lot that happens. So uh, anyway, I've been trying to wrap up this video for like two minutes now. But uh, that was it. I hope you enjoyed um, my little coverage, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.